she's she's bloody back. I'm back. It's it's rare. <laughs> Do you know what? It's actually rare that we have people back. I reckon under ten people we've had back. Why? Because they don't want to come back. No, they do want to come back. Well, maybe they don't. We forced them to come up with Oh, But Olga was one of my favorite episodes I've Stop. ever had. That's so nice. That's mm. really, really sweet. Oh, we got you crying already. Yeah. No. Come on. <laughs> but Wait. we have a different co-host this time. Yes, we do. Things have changed. Olga, have you ever had awkward moments with friends, co-hosts, other comedians? Just you in could, general? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My question for you yes. <laughs> is that. Have you ever... Well, do you, how do you deal with awkward situations? Are you oh, good my goodness. That's a, wonderful, that's a wonderful question. How do you deal? I try to... I try to laugh it off. I try to laugh it off. I try to be like the lowest status person in the room. Like well, just say something like super self-deprecating. Like, oh, I'm a piece of shit. And then you're <laughs> people are sort of like then that. preoccupied by being like, no, you're not. <laughs> really bad when they don't do anything. You're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I said I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> They're like, yeah, we know. Shut up. <laughs> I was I was looking for back. We went, Alex and I just went to the bathroom. Uh, and okay. I was looking for we, we do that before every podcast mm -hmm. little, and I, little pep talk I was looking for some validation from you were you? yeah yeah but you didn't notice what, it with your, <laughs> with, your, with your cock out no, no. <laughs> why aren't you saying it? <laughs> no I was looking for some validation because uh, I, I, recently I've been a bit stressed okay is there, any, is there anything specific that stresses you? Yeah. many things I'm getting married <gasps> okay that's fun that's stressful yeah moving house yeah that's Why are you piling all these things on huge monumental know. things all on top of each other? I don't know. It's like a sandwich of stress. A stress yeah. Apparently the three most stressful things in life are getting divorced, moving house and losing a loved one. Okay. Well, I think those getting are divorced is worse than... No, I think losing a loved one is the yeah. worst. And okay. then, then I think getting divorced and I think moving house. Okay. So I think those are the, those are the biggest stressful things in your life. And, um, and so I think I was stressed and I've now sort of calmed down a bit, but I was... What Looking, about getting a fringe and then realizing that that was a mistake? Yeah, that's stressful. <laughs> Sorry. That is, that is so stressful. That's the worst. Yeah. Like, what about shaving half your eyebrow off no! and realizing you look like an idiot? I did that at school. I'd go through a divorce daily if I didn't have to do that. <laughs> or all the time I first ever manscaped. Yeah. I manscaped when I was about uh, 16 years old. And I did it with a, um, a razor. Okay. Uh, the whole lot. Well, I, I, I sort, of, sort of trimmed one side. And I was like, oh, that's a bit too low. So I trimmed the other side. I was like, well, that's a bit too low. So I went back and forth and suddenly I just shaved it all off. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, oh God, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> it took the years right off. <laughs> but yeah. as we were coming out of the bathroom, I said, I think I've been stressed recently. And um, I, I said, I think I've calmed down now. And you walked on. I went, I think I've uh, calmed down now. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what you were doing. Uh, yeah. No, no, you're chill, man. You're chill. No, you're still salivating. Yeah, I know. Which is that a stress response? I guess it is. No, it's maybe it is. It's because I've been going to the gym and they, he gives me this drink and I don't know what it is. Not me. Okay. So, if I leant forward right now, and I've said this so many times, it's so boring if for If I people. lean forward right now, you'll just see my pecs. Um, <laughs> I, I salivate out of my mouth. I don't know why. It's very odd. It's better that it comes out of your mouth than not your bum. That is thing. fascinating. Yeah. If you were like, I'm using this new deodorant, I'd be like, oh, you're clearly sweating out of your mouth. Like, that's where it's all going. Oh, but, <laughs> that's so but I'm also sweating. I don't know what it, it feels. It's like, it's, it's like he's giving me some sort of drug and it's just affecting me now as I sit and do a podcast. I think there is something in this drink that he's giving you. It's not steroids it, or anything like that. I think it is. How small are your balls? They're really small. Okay. <laughs> all right. They were tiny before. So it's <laughs> quite hard to tell, really. Um... Did, apparently you went to the opera. I did go to the opera. I went to the opera yesterday. And now I'm into opera. <laughs> no, you can't be you, into opera after one night. Are you an <laughs> opera gal now? Okay, so I... My, my music taste is like Olivia Rodrigo. And I yeah. was convinced that I was going to fall asleep. I thought this is going to be the most boring thing I've ever seen. I didn't... I, like, I, there wasn't a part of me that even wanted to like it. Uh -huh. But it was breathtaking. Really? It was gorgeous. I think it's because both halves were quite short. It was like just over an hour, which I do think I have the attention span for. Yeah. That's not an opera. Then they had <laughs> subtitles <laughs> translating the Italian, so you knew what was going on. Where so did the subtitles appear? Just it, like... uh, on top as a little like right. running. It was it was so good, and like the costumes were better than any West End show I've seen. It, it was it, it was it really is, fun. It is quite moving, and like the tones they hit do like they definitely yeah. hit you in the. Have you been to opera? I was actually in an opera. Oh my god! When I was when I was like I was a kid, my dad. Uh, <laughs> It's like proper yokel village opera. My dad was in a in an opera, and there was there was space for for a little youngster to come on and not sing, but just frolic around. And I ran on ten minutes early. 
<laughs> you had one up. job. I know, I had one job. What was the role? What I, was the youngster just, doing? I was just a kid running around. I don't really That's know. That's also really very, early very, to run on stage. Like I, I would say like 30 seconds early, but 10 minutes early. Hey, I was a pretty laid back kid. I was I was chilled. That's not laid back. That's like an anxious kid running yeah. around. Yeah, yeah, so anxious. Like, am I on now? Am I on now? <laughs> but oh, you, you're now an opera person because you've been to one opera, but it was an hour long. No, no, two halves. Two halves an hour each. Uh, just an, over an hour each. Genuinely. Oh, my God. Oh, that is What fun. a fun time. Roll, so roll like, opera house? It was Glindborn. Oh, hello. And it was very fancy. And also, uh, all, all under 30s get 30 pound tickets. So everybody should go oh, and trying experience to, They're Glyndebourne. trying to get the youngsters in. Yeah. And there were so many older people who were like, we whisp- like heard whispering conversations being like, why are there so many young people? There must be an offer on. They felt <laughs> like they <laughs> was were. Was that what they were whispering? Uh, yeah, 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 like offended. That... Like, like passive aggressive. I, yeah, yeah. I would have turned around and been like, shh. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing worse uh, than when you get told to be quiet in a production. You're like, fuck off. You I, 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 went to an, I went to an opera um, at the Royal Opera House. And I can't remember what it was called, but it was, it's a famous opera. It's about racism. But I can't remember which one it is. And it was the most full-on experience. It was like four hours. Ooh. And you can't move. And everyone, you just have to sit there. Yeah. Mm. And you have, that, is, that is too much. That's too much. When you have to sit there for four hours. I'm not good at sitting still in general, let alone in a... I can't go to the cinema anymore without. Oh my goodness! That like the attention span that's has ru- TikTok has ruined. Different reason. Though. Do you think that's what it is? One hundred percent. Do you think social media has changed our sort of attention spans like that? I know that this yeah, has happened. We, we've this spoken definitely- about this. One hundred percent. Like I'm terrible now. Like I put on any like doc- documentary, I lose my shit after like five minutes, and I'm like on my phone. So yeah. Annoying. So how do we counter that then? Put your, throw your phone. Put your phone in the microwave. Put your phone in your microwave. We okay. were talking about this earlier. The, we, oh God, there's just so there's so many strands of conversation okay, happening go, right go, now. Okay, go, tell me. Well, first of all, okay, it, when, if you're going to the opera, I went, saw Marriage of Figaro, which is a farce. And the entire time they're like, let's dress up as women or like, let's pretend to a, have sex a, with a each farce. other. farce, is that a type of... I think so. Of opera? Yeah. Okay. So they were, it's like a genre, I guess. And yeah. so because it's so like fun and, and it's whimsical. it's like silly and... Yeah, like, okay, all nice. of it, all of it is like just tiny misunderstandings that are piled on top of each other. If it's like... I'm into it. And, and that's really, really fun because they're so low status like no one's dying people are just like pretending to kiss each other and dressing up as women the entire time <laughs> there's like there's a scene of like a, a woman telling a story where she raises her skirt and there's like a person under her skirt like it's fun <laughs> it's fun <laughs> it's a good old fun time um and apparently it used to be super political and then they wouldn't let it them release it so they replaced all the politics with sex so i know uh, that is crying. hilarious how they went well, what are we going to do here? I don't know. Just let's replace <laughs> yeah. everything yeah. with sex. Yeah. There was like an aria that Figaro had apparently about like hating the nobility and like the class system. And they just replaced it with him hating women. <laughs> so he does even, this like even huge, better. Yeah, yeah, huge yeah. aria about how women lead him on and they're evil. You what? probably eat fill that role. Yeah. <laughs> He's a well-known. Uh, what, that leading incel? People? Yeah, yeah. I'm a real, I'm a well-known misogynist. Yeah. <laughs> Big on the misogyny scene. Big on the circuit. Um. So hang on. So someone's got to do it. So why would they change it to sex? Because that's more interesting. It's because it's less controversial. Because I think it was like the the government at the time in the 18th century had to like approve of the text of the opera, and they were like, "This is too political." No, and they're like, "Okay, we'll just replace it all with interpersonal relationships as opposed to politics." And they were like, "Yeah, that's fine." I'm surprised they allowed sex because they were like very conservative back then. Like, was, they won't, was they still... weren't like P and V. They were like spend a night together. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So it wasn't like full on hardcore. No. Op- but there was body. in the opening scene there was a thing where she like Susanna Figaro's bride is like on top of him and she's like what's that in your pants and then it's it's like a a, a measuring tape. But I, we all know I remember what she's measuring. I I remember I went to watch Equus. Equus. Oh. oh my god, that's the first penis I ever saw uh, in my life. No, come that's on. That's the first real life penis I ever saw. <laughs> what was your experience go? So what happened? No, you go first. No, you you brought go. it up. You're our yeah, guest. Is, you this, is this the one with um uh, Harry Potter? Yes. Yeah, Daniel Radcliffe. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe. Did you watch uh, Daniel Radcliffe is, as well? With, yeah. a, with a horse, right? Yeah, Daniel Radcliffe's penis was the first penis I ever saw. Does the horse have Wait, a penis? Wait, hang on, well? hang on. The first penis you ever saw. I think I was like 14 or 15. Was Daniel Radcliffe. Well, I've seen them on screen, but IRL, that was I've the first one. I've seen them one. on the big screen. I've seen them <laughs> on the silver screen. Your first IRL in real life penis yeah. was Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah. IRP. I saved my pocket money. It was like from the balcony seat. Do you want to, go, like, to go see some dick? <laughs> Harry Potter's no less. <laughs> you, want to say, you want it to be someone you know. Also, when he... Um, 
in my production. My production? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did you, Sorry, re- yeah. did you uh, re- my re- recreate it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do this. Everyone is getting naked. Um, <laughs> uh, when uh, I want to watch Danny Rock, because I think I went to the opening night. Or something like that. Eager. Yeah, yeah, you're so cute. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, the first dick on Broadway. <laughs> yeah. I'm there. Just scrabbling at the door. Let me in. <laughs> and when he got naked, everyone cheered. What? <laughs> everyone clapped. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. That must be quite a cool feeling. I don't remember the plot, but like, was it was it an appropriate time to plot? What, what is the plot of Equus? The plot the, of Equus is a, it's uh, it's about he's he He's got feelings for a horse. He's in a horse. relationship yeah. with a the horse. And they're like, yeah, bestiality, come on. Epic. But he 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 gets the it's a point where he walks out on stage naked. Yeah. And he has a he has not manscaped in in my He's got, got a boosh. He's got a boosh. Got a boosh going on. And everyone cheered, which ruined the whole I remember as a drama student at the time, yeah. 16 years old. Well, this ruins the third wall, fourth, third wall, the fourth wall, yeah. So I found that quite weird. That is and bizarre. It was awkward well, as I guess well. maybe because it was the first first dick on whatever. And now every time I see a dick, I have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well done. Well done. Stand, stand up and clap. <laughs> <laughs> when, when was the first penis then you ever saw? <laughs> well, I'm ta- Did you, well, you must have seen on screen before that. Oh, I've seen them on screen. Like I've, I've watched like pornos. You watched pornos at fourteen? Okay, I wasn't like watching them, but the, the curiosity. Don't admit, like he's saying it. Tell her about your first porno experience. Uh, you were probably younger than fourteen as well. Well, my first porno experience this I said, is really quite intense. No, the Please. first porno experience I ever had. Um, I said this before. Is I, 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 it was four hours long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, nobody enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> no, the first porno experience I had. We, I was sitting with my group of friends in a room. And we watched a, a porno called More Precious Than Gold. And I, and I, sounds and I, so beautiful. Which so, one? Of, yeah. I'm thinking of which liquid. Yeah. More <laughs> precious. Than, yeah. It was more yeah. precious than gold. Oh, is that what they're <laughs> referencing? I'm guessing. Am That's I what it, yeah, it must be. And um, this was, isn't the one I'm thinking of. No, though. I know, but I don't think I should say that one. And um, I, this is the first time I ever watched porn. And I orgasmed without even. Hands free. Hands free. Like Bluetooth. <laughs> <laughs> Hands free ejaculation. And I didn't tell that's anyone. Incredible. I that's more up. precious than gold. That is way more precious than gold. Yeah. I, I, You've, we're really aging ourselves talking about pornos that had names that yeah. weren't like no search engine them. optimized. Like, unless it's Teen MILF, why why would you yeah, even yeah. name it? It's literally got every catchphrase on the name. <laughs> yeah. So they're just bringing everything. More to precious it. than gold. But tell, Porn tell used her to... the real. No, no, Come no. I can't. No, no, I can't. Come on. You, you can just... tell me off, off mic. No, he's spoken about it on this before. But I don't want you to be. It might be too. Gross. Shall I tell her for you? No, no, okay, I'll say it. You think I have a threshold? I, I'm, I'm Baby. Worried you, I worried you might. I, My I first penis was Daniel Radcliffe, okay? <laughs> I'm worried where your high jump is. But let's see. Uh, okay, the first time I, um, I, watched, I watched porn and I, I didn't really know about sort of masturbation and things like that, so I didn't really know what to do. And so I, well, yeah, clearly you didn't have to do anything. I know. Yeah, that was the <laughs> first time. Sit back and wait. But the second time, I I was like, okay, so I um I I thought <laughs> I put a finger up my butt. <laughs> yeah, you did. You're thinking that that's the threshold yeah, for me. Well, I love those. You you went from hands free to finger up the ass whilst like <laughs> I wanking. love that. Yes, you did. I know. I know. That's so, perfect. So punchy. It so was so punchy. punchy. And then when I, when I had... The, 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 the amount of men I've had to talk into discovering their own prostate and you went there yourself. Really? Yeah. Where, where do you work? Do you work like a sperm bank? <laughs> the sperm bank, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, but, but yeah because I think, um, I, don't, I, think, I think... I think men also are quite... Not all men, I'm generalizing massively, but a lot of men are quite um, sexually uh, boring. 100%. Yeah. Like, I definitely think it took me a while to be confident... And it didn't, to, didn't take you that long. You had your yeah. finger up. <laughs> 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 but I would, but I would never. But he didn't touch his dick for years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you have to? Uh, but why is that? Why do? Why I was almost awkward during sex for a long time, and wasn't really adventurous because I was like, oh no, it's got to be Manila. Mm-hmm. I can't possibly say where women M- seem to have a bit more confidence. I feel within their own bodies and. I, sexually, if I I'm being completely honest, as a bisexual woman, but also mm-hmm. as a woman existing in a lot of like straight-ish spaces, I think, I, I don't know if, that, if, if this is scientifically backed, but I think most straight men are homophobic in a way, and that pre- so? prevents them from ex- like having a full experience. Or like not even, it's either homophobic or fear of femininity, whereas like women don't have a fear of like 
I think, it's, I, think it's I, I think there's just a lot of toxicity around sex in general. Like I feel like we're kind of led into a pretty like weird space with it where it's not actually about like proper connection between two people, if that makes sense. So, you haven't blinked once. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Wait, but no. I think like women, women have been socialized to objectify women, right? Like mm. even if a straight woman yeah. will buy a magazine with the woman on the cover, whereas men are like terrified of objectifying even themselves. Like I, I have a stand up bit about how like straight men can't take nudes because they're afraid of looking gay. Because they're like, <laughs> if I look good in my own nude, then I'm gay for me. And that's bad. Um, and so like so, every straight man nude is just a medical too. photo of like, is this normal? <laughs> Um, and so, whereas like women are constantly objectified and so it's like, it comes naturally for them to be like, yeah, yeah I feel sexy. Whereas if it's a straight man being sexy, but like, but don't touch my butt. And also not in a gay way. That is so yeah. funny. And it's so, it's so true. If you guys aren't very good at taking nudes because to take a nude in a sexual way, you have to possibly pose a little bit feminine and you know, an arch and you have to, like yeah, and at, like objectively objectify yourself. And yeah. it's like, I can't objectify a man. So my current boyfriend is bi, and it's like having sex with him is just like night and day with a straight guy. Night and day. Really? <laughs> what? I'm so intrigued. Wait, <laughs> look at you. So oh excited. my God, I'm excited. You this, should have sex with a bi dude. This, I reckon everyone should. This is so fascinating. So, uh, your, 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 your boyfriend's bi, your bi, that's a lot of bi going on. So it's yeah. just, it's so. It, this the sex must be wild. Yes, <laughs> that is Sorry, awesome. Baby. <laughs> that is so awesome. No, it's great. It's wonderful. But but why is that? Because because he's much more comfortable with himself. Well, both of you. There's no like power dynamic and there's no roles because mm. everybody can play everything and that's like there's it's just ne there's Proper no freedom. Rigid. Yeah, to just like be everything whatever. is up for grabs. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. C can I ask a personal question? Feel free not to answer it. So when did you know that you were bi? That's the thing. There's like I don't think I never I ever never knew that, that I yeah that's not <laughs> was there it when wasn't. you saw Daniel Radcliffe's dick. You're like, mm, not sure. <laughs> there must be another <laughs> there must way. Be something else, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think the the official answer is when I saw the first Charlie's Angels movie. And do you remember when they're when Drew Barrymore and Cameron Diaz dress up as men, and then Lucy Leo is a dominatrix? Yes. And you're and that scene just made me think very confusing. There is there is a lot going on there, and I'm into all of it. <laughs> <laughs> That is that is amazing. So, um, in, so because I I truly believe, and I think people underestimate sex within a relationship and how important it is. Do I, they? Yeah, I think they do. I okay. Really, I think what happens is well, people in are having less and less sex these days. But I think that's single people. That's single people. Yeah. yeah and that's like with the rise of dating apps. And I know. Stuff I think and it's, it's also happening in couples as well because of like pornography and stuff. It like I think men and women they're like using their credits elsewhere if that makes sense and it starts to like kind of mess with your and so would you your, say your that brain sex sexually. in a relationship is more precious than gold i would <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, but that's because i do i think that i i think what happens in relationships typically what happens in relationships um from what i found is that you you become mates and so you become friends yeah. um because just naturally that's what happens and actually when you become friends with someone you then don't really have sex with them as much. So you friend zone your own girlfriend. You friend zone your own girlfriend or boyfriend, right? That's mm -hmm. what happens. And actually, you've got to keep a sort of separation that you guys are lovers, your partners, your teammates, whatever it is. And you are friends, but you're not just friends. And you've got to kind of keep that separation a lot of the time. I don't think people know how to keep that separation. I think that actually sex brings that in to a relationship. And you, and you. That's should, really wise. Yeah, I, I've I th never heard it explained I, that way. But I think it is right. That's I, that's what happens. As I keep swallowing my saliva, <laughs> I can hear the saliva. I'm so that. sorry, you're, guys. You're lucky you don't have the headphones on. All I can hear whilst you're talking about sex is, oh my god, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but then, are you? Are you quite honest and open with your partner about saying we should try this, we should do that? We, yeah, absolutely. How like that's I, I love. Are that you not? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think I feel like there's certain things that you haven't asked Sophie that you should. Like what? You know, the stuff that we've spoken about in, you know, behind closed doors. Like what? Come on. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you want? What do you really want? I want to touch my butt. <laughs> has she not? She sort of has. Oh my god, I got my <laughs> There you go. What? <laughs> <laughs> God. Uh, I love that you're propositioning Sophie via a podcast. Uh, gonna, uh, this is great. Uh, she's gonna, she's gonna, you're, you're gonna be like, uh, you're gonna yeah. be like have, babe, have you listened to the latest episode of, uh, of the podcast? Uh, Just uh, <laughs> backing into the room. I, right? I, I like, I, I, I would say I'm quite sexually um, hungry. 
Oh, I mean, you are salivating. Yeah, so yeah, to be fair. We, we tell me something it. I don't know. <laughs> but, but I am quite sexually, uh, I have a good, I have a sexual appetite. And also, the, I find my fiance, my government, so attractive. That's good. Yeah, yeah there you go. It's very important. No, it very is. Important. But sometimes that, you know, you, you, you sometimes lose that with each other, right? But with her, I definitely find her so attractive all the time. And so I think what happens is sometimes is possibly I try and have sex with her too much. And so for her, it's not fun. She's like, oh God, we're going to have to have sex again. Is that wrong? I say this with the utmost respect. Sometimes the things you say sound like the internal monologue of a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to put my finger on it for is the that last... That, there it is. Is that, is that, is that, is that, is it, what is it, what it is? <laughs> if there was a little woof in there, then I would have got it. <laughs> sometimes I want to play and I'm scared that maybe I don't want to play too much, but yeah. what, she's not going to want to play with me. Touch my bum. <laughs> touch my bum. <laughs> Sniff it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, so okay, well, what is the key to uh, a successful relationship? Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. What do you think the key to sex? Oh, I have no idea. You're engaged. I've only been dating my boyfriend for a few months. That's great, though. Yeah. Did you no. meet on a dating app or? No, we met in real life. The oh old fashioned way. He was Hello. a reply guy. Oh, my God. How well, did it how work? How old are you? <laughs> were you uh, in a bar? Well, I mean, I think he's also a comedian. So we, we were aware of each other and Obviously, we were on a yeah. night out and I tried to have a threesome with him and my friend Leo. And then oh Le my, my friend Leo was on board and my current boyfriend, Sam, was like, I don't want to have a threesome. Uh, <laughs> and that, I was like, I guess we'll fall in love. <laughs> that is so exciting. I love the fact I have never had any time in my entire life where someone has tried to organize a threesome with me. That or is the most exciting. It, like for you. Well, no, with me. Oh, right. I've never been in like a situation where someone's gone, hey, let's go and have a threesome. That's, that would be awesome. You're hanging out in the wrong circuits, obviously. You need to go and... Oh, I don't do know. I don't scene. know. Have you ever had a threesome, Alex? I have before. Okay, have you? Yeah, you strike me as the you... guy who's had a threesome. Wait, hang on a second. Why? Hang, hang on a second. Are you... <laughs> Are looking at us both, you... looking at us both... Yeah. Who do you think said more threesomes? You definitely have. You've well. definitely also had threesomes, yeah, right? Yeah, so you shut up. I've had Wait, one. Wait, but you're the one that's initiating them you, and you want to be approached. <laughs> Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, that's exactly you what You want to be asked for a threesome. <laughs> you're okay. the one initiating them. Going back to my original point, is that, as you said, guys do have this um, lack of confidence when it comes to being sexual because actually you, you, they don't want to act feminine or they have a problem with acting feminine or have a problem with you know, uh, supposedly being, uh, so, you know, touching their bum because, you know, that, in, you know, could seem as being homophobic in their eyes or whatever it is. So actually, guys should just be more open with themselves and more understanding of themselves. Is that what we're trying to say here? Mm. Absolutely. I think it's also, I mean, it's crazy to me that you have this, um, and we're talking about uh, cisgender men here, yeah. but it's like you have this button in your butt that is like greatest orgasm I can ever have. And then the only thing preventing you from touching that button, pressing on that button all day long is, is it gay? What? <laughs> so what if it is? Who cares? I know. That's crazy. Mm. That is crazy. <laughs> Have you ever found the button in your butt, mate? I've not found button. I've not. Have you gone looking? I sent a search team out there. <laughs> <laughs> they, they came back with nothing. Um, <laughs> No, yeah, I've, I'm, I'm pretty open. I don't really care. Like, yeah, I've been, you know, I've, I've done some stuff. Before. Why do you get all coy about it? You get coy. Do, my grand listens to this. I don't want to have to speak why about this. Why is your grand listening yeah, to why, this? Yeah, why, why is your, why is your grand listening to it? and likes to hear my voice. Oh, cool. you should call your grand. Um, yeah. uh, Olga, listen, um, we're going to stop there for part one, but I want to come part two. Well, hopefully I stop salivating because I'm so <laughs> sorry this is happening. But I want to talk about your, your going to Edinburgh. Yes. Which is so exciting. I'm very excited. I can't wait. And also, I want to talk about pointless celebrities, which we've all done. Hell yeah. You ready for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We'll see you in part two. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>
is when people come on this podcast, I sort of have to think, or Alex has to think, we have to think, okay, what are we going to talk about? It's going to be this, it's going to be that. We have to, but with you, for some reason, I don't know why, we can just sort of, I can just sit and just chat. Guys, which is this true. is too sweet. But, but it's true. And, and maybe that's, I don't know, the aura that you give or something, which is a, which is Thank a, you. Which is a, a great thing. And that's why with your Edinburgh show coming up, I'm, and I think I'm hopefully going to go up there. I really want to come watch you. Can you tell Aww. us a little bit about I, I want to come because I've never been. Oh my God, it's you have so to come to Edinburgh. Paint, it's so, so paint much Paint the fun. picture. I want to hear. Yeah, paint, what is Edinburgh like as what a comedian? What goes on? Okay, so <laughs> imagine a city that's open 24 hours a day. Oh, <laughs> Unlike Vegas. other cities. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Are there casinos? <laughs> Right, okay. 24 hours. Um, we're in. There's, shows, there's shows in every nook and cranny of the city, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, we're not just talking venues. We're talking like every basement, bar, attic, kitchen, toilet, really? ha a broom closet has a show in it. There's like a clown there at 2 a.m. doing some weird shit, right? It's, it's like relentless laughter all everywhere you look. The time. <laughs> all the time. Oh my time. God. But it's not, only, it's, it's, it's not only comedy, it's like theater and musicals and dance and all this stuff. And it's the, I mean, the locals of Edinburgh either hate it because their population doubles overnight for a month or they love it because they're obviously getting so much rent money. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah, they're, putting their, they're, they're putting their apartment on Airbnb <laughs> and sleeping in a yeah, like bin. field. They're yeah, like, yeah. yeah, they are. They're like moving to Glasgow for a month and commuting from there. <laughs> because honestly, uh, if, if you are, it, the biggest laugh you'll get about the Edinburgh Fringe is if you go on any of the property rental websites and being like, oh, this, this flat has uh, like a 15 people capacity. <laughs> and then you'll see like, you will see bunk beds in a kitchen. Kitchen. <laughs> like <laughs> easily <laughs> easily i i remember um a, a friend of mine misread a listing and instead of beds it said sleeping areas and <laughs> oh, oh, let me tell you <laughs> ever slept on an oven uh, before <laughs> <laughs> wow so wh when was your first ever edinburgh uh, so the first one i ever went to was 20 15 i was yeah. there for a week and i just could not believe that it was a real place it was like disneyland it's amazing because like most shows are free uh yeah. or donation based and you just you just walk in and you take a chance and mm. the, because like the cost is so low you're happy to take a chance so, on random so if you've got like comedians from like the top guys all the yeah. way down to just like yeah. starting out dude okay. it's everyone it's 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 and also the great thing about um and it's slightly changed i would say now in my naivety but it's where the likes of you know i mean coogan and um that's all I've got. <laughs> <laughs> but Eddie, Eddie is on. You, 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 you know, and uh, so Steve good Coogan and, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and people like yeah. um, <laughs> the guy who played Partridge. And <laughs> <laughs> really, it's, it's so good. There's something called the Perrier Award. Yeah. Which is best new coming or best act. Is that sponsored best? by Laurent Perrier, the sparkling water? I think. It used to be. It used to be, yeah. And then they changed it to like it's, it had a fo it was called a Foster's because Foster's beer sponsored it, uh, then Dave sponsored it. But it's the Edinburgh it's, Comedy Awards. It's basically award. the sellout. Um, the awards will take no, but, money. Yeah. No, but notoriously with it is like okay, uh, one of the most recent winners, Rose Matafeo. Uh, she won it. She is killing it. Yeah, and she is awesome. She's like, great. She's great. You know, and and so you know, it, it's this place in Edinburgh where. And I, I've been to, I've been to Edinburgh a few times and I actually performed with the podcast once with Francis. We went up did there. You? Yeah, 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 we did. And we did yeah. the, um, it's called the Udderbelly. We did that. Oh, and yeah. it was the scariest thing I've ever done still to this day, I think. But it's incredible. Did but, you have fun though? Oh my God. I had a freaking blast because everyone is there for one reason to really engage in art and experience comedy or theater or, or whatever. And, and you can be anyone you want to be and no one cares, and everyone is hustling in, in a great way. So you're walking around, you're drinking, you're eating, you're watching shows, you're experiencing, it's just entertainment the entire time. And you find some fucking funny, I went to Alfie Brown. Oh my God, yeah, he's great. He's oh amazing. Oh my yeah, yeah, yeah. God. And, and I'm gonna murder it, but his show was, he's a comedian, his show was all based around a moment where you saw a woman having a heart attack uh, and falling on the floor and his, whole mind process around that moment. It's honestly <laughs> so good. So what is your show about? Uh, so my show now is called Just Friends. Yeah. Um, and it's about, it's very, it, it has a lot to do with like being bisexual and sex as a bisexual woman. But also I think just like, the way that I would say is like in the early 2000s, I remember growing up and having this promise of this like independent woman part two destiny's child being <laughs> like being sold to you as like from like by samantha jones or mm. like courtney love or gwen stefani or whatever and then not being like whenever you actually tried to live it out 
that like that wouldn't be perceived the same way. Mm. Can you break that down a little so, bit? So for example, like you would watch Samantha Jones on Sex and the City. I, and I remember idolizing her and being like, oh my God, she's having all this casual sex and she's absolutely killing it. And then I remember going to university and like having some casual sex and like the amount of level of like slut shaming yeah. around it was wow. insane. And I was like, wait a second, this is not, this is not how Samantha Jones <laughs> lived. And so this like, the conflict of trying to do these like independent woman things, but then in real life, them not reading as such. And I think it's getting better now. And I think like that the problem is that like still living, living life with that with that promise and hoping that it will be perceived the way that um, it was promised to me to be perceived. If That's that makes a, sense. So you want to be able to do this Samantha Jones without people <clears throat> like shaming. Not yet. So I want to do I want to do the thing, but I also want it to be perceived the same way that it w w happened when Samantha Jones yeah. did it. Does that make sense? That I want to be Stifler's mom. That's what, what I want to oh, be. Oh yeah, that, that's yeah. my that's dream a, in life. That is a great reference. <laughs> but it's, that's quite a hard. That's quite a tricky thing to break down, right? Because yeah, yeah I I definitely I remember at university and before I was younger, and again not so much now. But if uh, uh, we, it's a it's a typical thing. Guys can go and sleep with a lot of yeah. different people, and you're called a player. Girls can have casual sex and they're called sluts. Yeah. But I, also, I think, it, I, I don't think it's just sex. I think it's like when I, when a man pays for something that's like, I mean, romantic or whatever, or he's, he's taking control. Mm. Whereas if a woman pays for something, it's like, oh, she's being used. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or it's like, if a man proposes to a woman, then that's, that's romance and love. If a woman proposes to a man, she's desperate to get married. Yeah. Or she's mm. too dominating. Or exactly. Whatever it is. And yeah. so all of these, like, it, it's so much more than that. It's like being forward and being like, Hey, do you want to go on a date with a woman? It's like so desperate. And like, and then with a man, it's really sort of forward and cool and confident. So I, all of these things. And I feel like I've always been drawn to doing the dominant thing and I've never had it perceived the way that I want it to be perceived. Mm. Oh my God. That's quite demoralizing. Yeah. And you, and you keep like seeing Stifler's mom and be like, why is it cool when she drinks whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> but why is it? Why is that? Why does it work in her? And, and, and forget the fact that it's a movie and she's playing a character. Yeah. Let's take that aside. Yeah. We have to remember it's a movie. Yeah. Remember that's Because if you looked up to like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Every time I smoke a cigar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really loved Anthony Hopkins and I tried to do <laughs> what he did and I just wasn't received as well. It's a real shame. <laughs> but, but why is that? Because there has to be a certain element of her character, which allows her to, to in that period of time to get away with it. And what is that? Is that because it's she... reinforced by the boys in the movie thinking it's yes. cool? Yeah, it's reinforced by guys saying she's a milf. It's reinforced by um... it's always men. It's always men reinforcing it. Holy shit! You fuck. That sucks. Just you... something to think about. I'm no. thinking about it. Unpacked it. I'm thinking about it. You've unpacked it, and I feel like a douchebag. Because <laughs> if she was bags. smoking a cigar, and then a b bunch of boys came in and were like, "Old hag," it would just it be would different. change it. Yeah. yeah. That is exact. I've never thought about it that way. It, that's exactly what I it guess is. It's all about who has that like authoritative voice about like what's okay. Mm -hmm. and that has famously been men then for, why for does so it, long, right? Yeah, but then I why guess. does it work in Sex and the City? Well, because they're if you all the men are reinforcing how hot and cool Samantha Jones is. No one on screen in Sex and the City comes on and says, "Hey, Samantha Jones, you're too much." That is so. It's like in Friends as well. In Friends, the guys can have casual sex. So it's all about this. Joey, but, it's a player. Yeah, it? but the but the as uh, Monica, um, Rachel, and Phoebe, they can't have. They don't have casual sex. No. Never. No. And they're all, all constant, constantly being like attached to whoever they're sleeping with. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I've never thought about it that way. It's yeah. That is insane. So your show is all about breaking down that sort of situation yeah. and understanding it. Yeah. And and so and like I I still truly genuinely believe in the promise of Samantha Jones. I I, I hope that that one day. And I think with with years you stop caring about not be, the the stuff not being perceived. Like ten years ago, I would have cared so much more yeah. if someone slut shamed me. Whereas now I don't give. That's a shit. one of the most freeing things when you're yeah. like, actually who gives a fuck yeah. what anyone thinks. It's, it's like I'll pay for dinner. I yeah. don't I don't care what anyone yeah. says. I always say that accepting accepting is like once you and it's it's like a. I remember I dated a girl when I was 16 years old. I was so in love with her. She really didn't love me. And I became way more needy. It's the same girl that when she broke up with me, I begged. I got on my knees and begged. I said, please don't break up with me. And oh. he still you cried on her plimsolls. Yeah, I cried well. and my tears dropped on her plimsolls. I could see my, my teardrops on her grey plimsolls. They should make an opera. Is that, yeah. That. <laughs> what? Quite... Is that an Arctic Monkeys song? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to write about you. <laughs> um... Where was I going with that point? I was, I was, oh, oh, that's it. And then what I did is I, I, I 
I mean, honestly, I was pathetic for about a year. Oh, oh God, I love her. Like, what's going on? All of my friends, I um, honestly would like, please shut the fuck up. <laughs> this is like too much now. <laughs> and after a year, it was like a light switch. Boop. And I was saying like, oh my God, I don't care anymore. Mm. And I oh my God, that's wonderful. I remember running up to my friends going, guys, I don't care. <laughs> and they're like, oh my God, I like get it. And I was like, no, no, but you don't understand. <laughs> I don't. Like, Stop touching me with that finger. It's really <laughs> fucking Why awesome. are you drooling? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the time. <laughs> and they're like, you, and they're like no, they're, I was like, ask me, ask me if I care. And they're like, do you care? I was like, I don't care. <laughs> but it's an amazing moment where you oh, acceptance, yeah. right? Yeah. So you must have got to that moment and then. And that's probably why with your show in Edinburgh, you can speak about it because you're in a place where you don't care. Yeah, I have per like I have perspective. It just feels it, it feels like that galaxy brand meme where you're just like, I don't care. As a comedian, though, if you um, do you, you the last thing you want to feel right is self-conscious on stage. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about a subject which you so you have to be comfortable in a space talking about something. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. Is that right? Yeah. And I think a lot of it is also making sure the audience knows that you're confident. So sometimes I will mm. have to overdo my confidence to make sure that everyone is fine. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> hey, um, I really don't care. And, some, don't care. <laughs> and sometimes I'll, I'll do my material and it will be completely different if it's like a lineup of a multiple comics and I'm doing 20 minutes and no one in the audience knows who I am. I see people like shifting a little bit and being like, oh, my God, is she OK? <laughs> Guys, is yeah, she okay? I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. Whereas if you bought a ticket to come see me and you know that this is like my fourth show and I've like been on tour, you kind of trust me to 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 know that I'm not saying things on stage accidentally and I wrote them down. Um so it will it will it will because a lot a lot of times people are like, Oh god. Oh sweetie. Someone take her good microphone away. Do you know what I mean? That is There's a lot of young people. Yeah. There, uh, how long does it take you to write your show? When you what is the writing process? Does it take you a year, two years? Do you, like what Yeah, because of the because of the fringe cycle, yeah. it's usually it's a show a year. Have you have you completed it? Have you are you set, ready to go? Ooh, I wouldn't say it's ready to go. But I hope to be ready by August. And it's only an hour. It's in it? August, isn't it? So yeah, it is, yeah, I mean, it, it I, has hope to be, I hope to be ready when the show's on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's only one way to find out. You, you need to buy a ticket. Yeah, uh, you, we, I, 100. percent We're going to buy tickets. We're gonna go, we should. Uh, we should actually, guys. We 100. percent We should go to Edinburgh. Let's all go. It'd be so <gasps> fun. Guys, it'd be so much fun. We could do a shout out. Yeah, oh my god. We could yeah. do a shout out. Go on, get it. It's us. And then you look that thing where you try and act not smug, but you are smug. Where you sort of sit in the crowd and go, "Oh, they're talking about me." <laughs> yeah. um, do you get nervous though when you perform still? Or no. I think it, 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 it depends on the material that I'm doing, the audience. If I see a front row of all like 60 plus, I know it's going to be a tough one. <laughs> Does that sometimes Because then I'm like crying and I'm like telling the older women that I'm like, this is liberation. This is what you fought for. <laughs> Me talking about come for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be intense because actually... When you go and then you see the audience. Every time I, I hear come, sir, I just think more precious than gold. <laughs> well, when I came in my, when I came and then just, what? you know, I watched it and then I, I came. Oh, you came in pants. Yeah, no, no, I know. Just, uh, no, People no. study Tantra for years to do what you did. Yeah, yeah, you're actually like some sort of Zen master. You Have you ever done Tantra? <clears throat> no. Oh my God, wait, are you going to talk Have about Have you? Oh my God. What? What is One of mean? the greatest experiences of my life. I, uh. Uh, I, it's someone, I, 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 someone basically said, uh, to me, have you ever done Tantra sex? And I said, no, I've done this before. And they said, okay, well, you're going to experience this. And I went, okay, great. And so they said, just lie on your front. So I was like, okay, naked. So I lay on my front naked and they, they got my, uh, penis and they put it down between my legs. Like it was a tail, <laughs> like it's a tail, you know, so you're lying on your front and your penis is coming down like it's a tail. I can't believe I'm saying this story. Anyway, they then lubed up their hands. And the only way I can describe it is like, it's like they, it's like they pretended my penis, they were pulling up a well. <laughs> like, like that. They were pulling up a well. Pulling a rope like a magician well. pulling yeah, handkerchiefs. Yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. putting handkerchiefs on my penis. Honestly, I levitated. I was, it was the most phenomenal feeling I have ever felt in my entire life. I don't know what happened. It was unbelievable. Yeah. You should try it. <laughs> I feel like I'm experiencing it now. Mm. It was I don't know what it was. It was um it was this insane experience. I don't it, it felt like it's gotta bend your 
dick in quite a weird. No, I, I it sort of didn't. It sort of works, yeah. Yeah, it sort of works. Very interesting. And I levitated. Honestly, I was like, <laughs> I, I became Michael Jackson. My legs were shaking so much. So you, you can come without your hands free coming and you can fly. You're pretty much <laughs> some weird Superman. Yeah, it was pretty insane. Anyway, back to your... <laughs> what, what are you I thinking? can't top that. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. Of course you can. <laughs> My comedy will make you levitate. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I was saying, so you, you, you just don't, you don't get nervous really apart from left and less the crowd. You don't get nervous about what you're saying. If it's new material, I do. But if it's stuff that I know has worked in other rooms, I will be more more concerned with if if the audience members are of a demographic that I don't think will enjoy what I have to say. Also, I, I also admire uh, like Edinburgh because, and I, I I admire the comedy circuit so much because I feel like it's the o- not the only one, but there's rarely another circuit or industry where people support each other so much. Normally, you're quite competitive. Like, you know, if you go to sports teams or business or modeling or music, everyone's quite competitive. And comedians are just supportive. Oh, my God, go and watch their show. They're incredible. Go and buy this ticket to that. You've got to go and see them. They're so good. Or, or, or am I being naive to that? Well, I've never been in a different world, but I know for a fact that, like, everyone gets into comedy because they are themselves comedy nerds. So for me, the enjoyment of Edinburgh is more so watching other people's shows than performing my own because it's like a concentration of my favorite art form mm. all in one place. So, like, the fan in you is so strong. Wow. That it's almost stronger than the comedian in you. And I think we underestimate how accessible comedy is and is an art form. Like people will go take a like take a pun on a band or go watch opera, right? But opera is so much less accessible than comedy. Comedy is just a person speaking into a microphone. Mm. Like you I think there there's like the barrier to entry as a new audience member of the of the art form of comedy is so much lower because you're like oh they're talking about life experiences i have those do you know what i mean there's also i don't believe and people can maybe argue differently but personally i don't think there's anything more expressive than comedy in terms of your own you can yeah music maybe you can talk about your feet but comedy because it's an hour let's say it's typically you know a set like an hour long there's nothing quite like that art form where you can really express what you feel yeah. and you believe and your views and you're this and you're that. There's nothing else like it. And so there's no like th- with music, it's like gone through the interpretation of music. But this is raw. This is like yes. I'm feeling it. And that's how you're getting it. Yes. And you're just you're just a, a person on a stage with a microphone. Yeah. You haven't had edits or tweaks or ups or downs or moments and things like that. You're just saying, holy shit, here I am. As you said, raw as you can be. Is that why you love it? Do you think? Yeah, it's so immediate. And that's like whenever you go into any other aspect of the industry, you're almost frustrated with how many middlemen there are. The fact that you need to write a script and that script needs to be edited and then that needs to be filmed. And like in a way, obviously, that's a high, higher production, cooler thing. But the immediacy of I had a thought and all I need to do is mm. just say it into a microphone is so satisfying and you get so spoiled by it. Yeah, that is it, it, there's no buttons to press. No, there's no things to build. And you know, oh, what, what did you study at university again? What was computer it? Computer science. Computer science. Nice. So she knows about buttons. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And about, there's you one know in about. your butt. Yeah, you know about buttons. Oh, buddy. there's one in your butt. So do you write a lot of stuff then for for shows and things like that? For as in, do you do script writing? Yes. Yes. Is, Which is a different. But that's different because also I don't think you get uh, you don't get the satisfaction or validation as much. No. You write something, you go, this is going to be so funny. And then one day. And then, yeah, can, yeah. and then you give it to someone else and then they murder it. You're like, well, that's not how it was meant to be. If it ever sees the light of day. Right. Like, <laughs> I think you just get so spoiled by the immediacy, immediacy of stand up that yeah. like all you do is have a thought, go on stage, say it out loud. You don't need to think of a note that expresses it or a color that expresses it. Nothing. There's it's just. What it, what it the way that it came to your mind mm. i always find with comedians it's there's so much pressure on um you guys because we talk about this before like doing things like pointless right pointless right. celebrities like we said before oh break. what a segue did you see oh, you that? Like that do you hear that you like that you like that you segue? That? holy smoke did you oh, did you? oh. oh my god let's get a segue siren on Sit guys back, bitches, get ready for this <laughs> baby <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going that way. The next minute, we're going this way. Oh, damn. It goes up and down wherever you want. Here we go. <laughs> Just like my penis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You bend that back and then you levitate. <laughs> Sorry, is this a top rated tour of a smaller European city? Because that's a segue. <laughs> So pointless, never 
<laughs> love it if you just didn't mention no, it. No, it. My point was, it, it actually, the segue did work because um, as a, I, you, when I go on shows, like I did House of Cards, you've done that before. I did it yesterday. House of Games. House of Games. Yeah. Uh, but with House of Games or 8 out of 10 Cats or whatever it is, I go on as, I suppose, uh, that bloke who's on TV shows, right? Mm -hmm. And so I have the um, slack of not having to be the funny. The man with, whose mouth is full of saliva. Oh my God, so I know, just, just swallowing. <laughs> I have the slack. Slack. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. <gasps> but I have the slack of not having to be funny. I can just be whatever. And, oh, and, but I want to be funny, right? But right. I don't have the pressure. As a comedian, you're meant to be funny. It's like, come on, be funny. Because mm -hmm. you're a comedian. Do you feel that pressure or no? I feel that pressure on shows like Mark the Week, right? Oh, yeah, cool. Whereas, like, you are expected to be funny. Mm. If it's House of Games or it's Pointless, I mean, maybe they're expecting me to be funny, but I'm there to win. <laughs> so so you, go, you go straight in with, like, yeah, no, tough this luck is, we're for not anyone fucking around. This is this, looking this, for this, a laugh. <laughs> we're not fucking around. This is big. Yeah. I know. I'm here to show off my general knowledge and take <laughs> names. <laughs> <laughs> so yours is purely just to go straight for the kill. Yeah, and I think sometimes even producers will be like, "This is this is the celebrity edition, you guys like ha keep have it fun, light, have fun." Have fun. fun. <laughs> I'm just like, you're like, Fuck shut that. up, because yeah. we we did um, <laughs> pointless celebrities. How far did you get in it? Ah, uh, we won. Shut up. Four pointless answers. Don't worry about it. Get out Don't of town. Worry. Four pointless answers. You're talking shit. No ways you did. Four. Four. Count them. It's on TV, I, I, so she wouldn't yeah. lie about it. Who are you with? My friend Chloe Petz. Chloe Petz, okay. And you got getting a pointless answer is um, rare. Is like coming. Is like coming, yeah. Is like coming. Yeah. So you got four pointless answers. Mm -hmm. We didn't even get one bit. But we got down to the last round. We got proud one of answer that was <laughs> I'm proud like of us too. three and then one that was one. No, we got one that was one and one that was one as well. Oh, okay. What were the countries? Because you said there was Olympic gold medals, right? Yeah. The question was, is what countries have only ever won one Olympic gold medal? And you said. And we were going, oh I God, said, what did we pick? I carried you in that. You carried me massively. Yeah. Uh, I can't Into remember. losing. Yeah. Into losing. <laughs> no, he, <laughs> yeah, said, no, he said the right pointless answer. You said Switzerland and I, and I diverted you away from it. Oh, I don't know. And then we said Kenya, I think it was. It was I think a it long was, time ago. I think it was Kenya. Um, so, what, so you won the full thing. Mm-hmm. Holy did you, oh, did shit. you get a trophy? Yeah, it's very small. Oh. Is it? But you got... Shame. So what was your pointless answer in the end then? So the we had a category that was Premier League players and Chloe is in, in like a, just a supreme football nerd. So I didn't get any of the of the last three, but she was incredible. It was like you had to name players... What? That's so if, niche. ...in very specific like Premier League teams, like 2011, 2012. <laughs> Appar yeah. Apparently they got a phone call before to talk about topics. We didn't get that. What the I think because I know what it is because we were reality stars going on it. So they're like, right, we're going to make them look stupid. <laughs> I, I think it was, it was also... And you got to the end. Yeah, but I think it was also at the time or when, we, when we did it, they called it Pointless Celebrities. As they were like, these guys are pointless celebrities. Oh, I think, I think, oh is, that, is that not what it's called generally? No, it's called pointless. No, and then it's celebrity, celebrity version. No, they, they, I think at the beginning they thought it was a joke and then they thought it was too mean. But we were in the time when they didn't think it was too mean. They just were like, no, these guys are pointless celebrities. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah. And so we were I all still, like, you know who's a pointless celebrity? <laughs> Richard Osman. There yeah, I said it. There you go. No, please have me back. Yeah, yeah, we love you, Richard. <laughs> God, he sold so many books, by the way. Oh, yeah. His his Thursday's Thursday's Murder Club has so sold over four point two million copies. The man is an empire in the UK alone. That's wild, and it's translated <laughs> into a bunch of languages, isn't it? I know. That we is... should write a book. Should we write a book? I uh, yeah. Well, if we were going to yeah. write a book, the what... boy with saliva in his mouth. <laughs> oh, what would happen to that boy? <laughs> I I think he maybe got bullied, but then at the end, like something something happened at the school that where like it was on fire, and the only way yeah. to put out the fire was all the saliva in your mouth, and then everybody was your best friend. I'm gonna go different. I'm gonna go different. Please? I'm gonna go a bit darker. Okay. He um he did loads of great things. He he went around putting out fires. He went around like um solving uh so sal so sal solving. um <laughs> he went around uh you know giving water giving saliva to people but they used it as water he just saved the world but then what happened well, was really begrudgingly like yeah, yeah cheers, no mate. but then what happened was is he was then uh on a trek somewhere and he tripped over and hurt his leg <gasps> And he couldn't get up. And because of the salivating, he drowned in his own saliva. No. Yeah. And the I know book is called him. Spit or Swallow. My, yeah, uh, <laughs> when, <laughs> when is your... When is 12 your, million copies sold. 12 million <laughs> copies sold. Uh, when is your uh, show? So when it, what dates the Edinburgh show? 
it's every day at the Edinburgh Fringe. So it is every no day. days off. Every oh day. my god! Every day. Let's and go. Are you going to be out at night getting? Drunk? Yeah. All right. No, no, no. You're not. You're yes, gonna... I will. Of course. Come on. Are you I love a... to. I love a bit of partying. Me? I love a bit of uh, partying. Oh, partying. <laughs> yeah. I like those parties. <laughs> yeah. I like a bit of uh, lager or a beer in the evening. <laughs> do you do it? So you... Glug, glug, glug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, drink, 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 drink. <laughs> So you, you're going to get pissed and then go and do the show the next day? Yeah, but the show's at like 7.30 p.m. Yeah, that's still tough, though. Quite nice being a little bit, like... A drunk. little buzzed? A little buzzed. No, it's bad, I think. Really? It is bad. Oh, I can't... Is, I can't... Because I think what happens is even if you're ever so slightly drunk, even if you don't feel that drunk, your timing is just ever uh, so slightly off. Yeah. <laughs> and timing is everything, yeah. baby. It actually is. Like, like, it, like... Oh, uh, Unless everyone else is drunk and then they're on your time. No, because you think you're going yeah, to be... You need to have one <laughs> yeah, shot. Yeah, Everybody's one yeah. shot in. Are you all on five shots? Okay, great. <laughs> no, but you have to... Because uh, what the alcohol gives you is confidence, right? Or sub, like fake confidence. And then when you get fake confidence, you think you're funnier at certain times. But actually the show that you've written is way funnier than the improv that you can probably yes. do. Mm. And the improv is defined to like a needle point where it's perfect. Yeah. Where your improv is not defined. No. Like refined. Defined? Refined. So actually being drunk is a bad thing. Are there any like famously drunk um, comics, comedians? That yeah. Just get... I mean, everyone yeah. in the 80s. It's like a, really? yeah, just was... on stage hammered. Who was that guy who died on stage? Oh, God. Who died I on die stage? I die on stage every night, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Come you... on. Tommy, Tommy Cooper? Tommy, Tommy Cooper. Cooper. Yeah, did he die on stage? Tommy Cooper had a heart attack on stage and died. And they all oh. thought he was joking, so they all laughed. <gasps> it's the final, like, sort of. A... Oh, God. <laughs> That's the yeah. final gag. And do you know how, he, did he, I think he died in his own saliva. No, I'm joking. I was, I like, <laughs> I got, I got, he gagged on his own spit. Gagged, gagged you you oh laugh God. about it, but this is probably something that he, he really like ruminates and freaks out about shit. So you definitely, have you spoken to your doctor yet? Uh, no, but I've organised an appointment. I fucking knew No way, get I over it. I have health anxiety, get over it. He'll be freaking out oh, about I'm dying. I'm sorry, I'm sorry that you don't, you know, you I can't, don't drink fucking you can't steroid, open, steroid You can't be open juice. sexually and I can. Hey, put a finger up my bum. <laughs> okay. push, push my button. Maybe I will. Push the button. I will. I'm going to do it. I'm going to push right. your button. Come on then, you prude. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it right now. All right. When we do a special okay. segment at Fringe, you can come and finger me on stage and we'll show how comfortable we are with each other's assholes. Um, for charity. For charity. For charity. Did you actually know that after Tommy Cooper died, they actually found a rat was m moving him around uh, in his fez? <laughs> Ratter. I can't think of anything. That... <laughs> you were trying to. Yeah, it's like it's somewhere there. It's Just like... laugh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Olga, I want to say, uh, firstly, I, I can't wait to come to your show. God, thank you yeah, so much. And, and I think anyone who is listening to this podcast, if you are going to Edinburgh, go and check out your show. Where can we get tickets? On your website? Where can we do it? At the Fringe? Can we get buy pre-order? On the Fringe website. So we can pre-order right now? Yeah, it's, um, it's going to be at Monkey Barrel. It's called Just Friends. And I promise you it'll be the time of your life. Monkey Barrel, good, good theatre. Good, yeah. good place. Great. <laughs> She's like, nah, shit. Monkey Barrel <laughs> rocks. Monkey Barrel is like the best comedy club in the country. Uh, what, can we ask what time you're on? I think it's 7.35. That's great. You've Come already, on. You've already got your set or times already. Or 7.45, I'm not that's sure. That's amazing. Oh God, I don't know. But then we'll find out. Get there for 6.30, have a yeah. few drinks. And we'll hang Not out. Too many. And we'll hang out. Um, listen, I want to say a big thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank it is so always fun. such a joy. I love it so much. Sorry I was salivating and rambling a lot today. <laughs> thank you for um, telling me that we can be open sexually. Always. Always, right. It's a comfortable space. Thank you so much for having me. Um, what we, anything else, we can go and check out your Instagram. We can go and check out all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, we're going to see you in Edinburgh. But what we like to do at the end of the podcast is leave our listeners with something inspirational. And to all your listeners, I'd like to say, always treat leopard as a neutral. Okay. This is black, white, red denim. Leopard is a neutral. Okay. That's great as fuck. Profound. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody will see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>